Hey, how are you going? How are you? I'm glad to hear it in my head, in my imagination. Today I'm going to just do a uh, an unboxing video. Um, I received this in the post a couple of days ago. I ordered it online a while back. Um, it's a bunch of Blu-rays from uh, Arrow Video. Uh, for those who don't know, Arrow Video are a UK-based company and they they bring out DVDs and Blu-rays of like cult films, maybe, or it's kind of random how they pick them. I'm not sure how. I don't know if people like request them or what, or if they just do it on labour of love on their part. But they do. They they, they remaster them. Um, they import whatever features were on previous uh, mediums, and a lot of the time they add new features like a documentary maybe or a new commentary sh shit like that and um i've had a few off of them in the past i mean these two right here nightbreed and american wealth in london arrow blu-rays imported the features from the original stuff and got added new ones as well and you get the posters the posters are fucking great so yeah i wonder if i'll get any posters in these i can't remember i think there's about eight blu-rays i ordered I had a few wines when I did it, so I was just like, yeah, I'll have that, I'll have that, you know. And I can't remember every one that I ordered, I don't think. So, um, so it's going to be as much a surprise for me. Well, not as much as a surprise, but it will be kind of a surprise. Um, as it might be for you, if you give, why would you give a shit? So, first one, this is good, this is like a... This is like the lottery. First one I pull out is what we got, what we got, what we got. Wee! Porkies. Now I didn't even know um fucking Arrow had done this. I mean they did this in 2014, I believe, something like that. This is a very important film for me because I saw this when I was just just entering adolescence and you know that area. <clears throat> and um, this has got some fond memories, uh, particularly uh, Kim Cattrall, where she's the randy fucking gym teacher. Um, but besides those uh, pleasant memories, this is just funny as a motherfucker. Uh, so another thing that um, Arrow Video do is they'll, uh, they'll commission new artwork for the cover, and you've got the original poster on the reverse side of it, so you can choose which one you, you show. Speaking of which, I'll uh, I'll just check. I think the original, the original poster of Pork is it's like some chick's arm and leg in the shower and like a dude's eye looking at her through like a, a, a glory hole of some sort. Oh, fucking off there. Eh? Special edition contents: high def Blu-ray presentation, optional link below. Commentary by Bob Clark. Interviews with Bob Clark and Mr. Skin. Okay, that'd be interesting, Mr. Skin interview, I guess. Trailer's reversible sleeve, so not a massive amount of extras on this. Yes, it's that. Hey boys, you want to see me take my towel off and show you my, my tits and my bush? That, yeah, there we go. Hang on, check this out. So there you go, that's the original uh, <coughs> movie poster. You'll be glad you came. <laughs> Special edition contents. It, it tells you fuck all on this side, but on this side it's like... Blah 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 blah. Optional uh, audio commentary by Bob Clark. Porky's through the peephole. Bob Clark looks back at Skin Classic. Mr. Skin celebrates Porky's in the heyday of the 80s teen sex comedy. Porky's Trail Wheel. Reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Jim Rugg. Well, you know that already because you have to take it out to read that. So what? Because on this side it's just it's, it's bog all. It just, it, just, it just gives you like, it, just, it paraphrases what's in there. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So put that one down here. Next on the list, what have we got here? Oh, Bound. Yeah, I forgot about this one. And um, this is uh, written and directed by the Wachowskis. Uh, I think this is what they made to convince Warner Brothers to let them make the Matrix, something like that. Um, initially, I watched this movie because when it first came on TV, because it's like you know, I thought, oh. Jennifer Tilly, and, uh, Jennifer Tilly and Gina Gershon in some kind of uh, some lady love scenarios. I'm like, I'll, be, yeah, yeah, I'll check that out. Why not? 
But it turns out to be a fucking wicked film. It's like a really kind of tense, um, just really well made. You know, Joe, Joe Pantoliano is the uh, the mafia hood husband of uh, Jennifer Tilly. And she and Gina Gershon start having a, an affair and then plan to rob, or plan to frame him. Well, they plan to rob some money that is coming to a Joe Pantoliano. And... Uh, it just shit kicks off. If you've not seen it, watch it because it's fucking awesome. That's why you know I bought the Blu-ray. Um, but anyway, what have we got? Ooh, special edition contents, high definition digital transfer. Yeah, yeah. Blu-ray blast. That was pip pip pip. Audio commentary with writers, directors, the Wachowskis, stars Gina, uh, Jennifer Tilly, Gina Gershon, and Joe Pantoliano. Editor Zach Steinberg and consultant Susie Bright. Uh, Femme Fatales, interviews with stars Gina Gershon and Jennifer Tilly. Hail Caesar, an interview with actor Joe Pantoliano. Here's Johnny, an interview with actor Christopher Maloney. Oh yeah, anyway. Modern Noir, the, the sights and sounds of Bound. Interviews with director of photography Bill Pope, editor. It's like, uh, okay. Vintage EPK featurettes, US and international versions. Theatrical trailers, two spots, stills gallery, reversible sleeve featuring fucking artwork, blah blah. By Sam Smith. I'm guessing not the uh, the gay singer Sam Smith. Collector's booklet featuring new writing on the film by James Oliver, illustrated with original stills and artwork. Oh, okay. But yeah, so that this is the new commissioned um, cover for that. I think I prefer the old one, or the not the, the original one, if it's the same as what was on the, uh, the video cover in the UK. God, it's counting fucking thing. Hang on, what am I doing? There's a, there's a flap somewhere on here where it says blue and you can just open it easy. No, you motherfucker. Bollocks. Oh, fuck it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so. That's bound. Okay, next, 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 next. Oh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the 1978 version starring Donald Sutherland. So, I can get I can get the wrapping off this easy enough. The bound one is a uh, bound. <laughs> oh, you fucking bastards! Spoke too soon, perhaps. Ah, oh, here we go. So yeah, this is uh, this is you know. If you, everyone knows the invasion of '78, the Donald Sutherland invasion of the body snatchers. I mean, the the final scene where the that's a, that's a, that's an iconic uh, clip, really. There you go. He's even doing it on the fucking front cover, right? It's like, what if you've never seen the film before? What if you've never seen this before? You think, oh, I'll just I'll try that one. That sounds interesting. You're giving away the fucking end right there. What, Donald Sutherland doing his. <laughs> Fuck you know. Anyway, what, what we got in here? Audio commentary with director Philip Kaufman discussing the pod, a new panel conversation about Invasion of the Body Snatchers and Invasion Cinema featuring Kim Newman and filmmakers Ben Wheatley and Norman J. Warren. Dissecting the pod, a new interview with Kaufman biographer Annette Linsdorf. Writing the pod, a new interview with Jack Seabrook, author of Stealing Through Time on the writings of Jack Finney about Finney's original novel, The Body Snatchers. Revisitors from Outer Space, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Pod, a documentary on the making of the film featuring Philip Kaufman, Donald Sutherland, writers W.D. Richter, and more. The Man Behind the Screen, the sound effects pod, a look at the film's pioneering sound effects. Yeah, that's what, that's, yeah. The Invasion will be televised. The, cinema, the Cinematography pod, cinematographer Michael Chapman, taxi driver Reggie Bull, Discusses the look of and influences on the visual style of the film. Practical Magic, the special effect pod. A look at the creation of the special effects from the opening sequ space sequence, uh, original theatrical trailer, reversible sleeve feature in the original, and newly commissioned artwork by Nathaniel Marsh. Okay, great. So yeah, this is just, this is just a fucking brilliant film. You know, it's just uh, that sense of like paranoia and like, you know, he's slowly seeing like the rest of the world kind of become, you know, oh, she all okay came now. Yeah, yeah. You'll get that reference if you've seen the film, but you know. I'm curious as to what the original, uh, what's the original? Oh, yeah, that's the original fucking artwork for the, uh, the uh, original poster for it. 
I don't know about that font. That font's kind of weird. It's it's like a kind of soap opera font. American soap opera, like Santa Barbara, that type of shit. So I don't know if that's just a sign of the times, but yeah. Yeah, I think I prefer this this new artwork they've got for it, so yeah, I'll keep that in there. Look what we've got here, some kind of fucking pamphlet. So yeah, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. What's next? Hmm, what's this? Ah, a fish called Wanda. Ah, uh, you know, I love Monty Python, I love Faulty Towers, the Monty Python movies, uh, you know, I love Holy Grail, Life of Brian, and... This takes that humour but puts it into a more um, grounded context, I guess. So, what, what, brand new 4K restoration from the original negative. Okay, original mono of the era. Subtitles are John Cleese's final farewell performance, a 1988 documentary on the making of A Fish Called Wonder, featuring interviews with actors Cleese, Jimmy Lee Curtis, Michael Palin, Kevin Clyde, and director Charles Crichton. Something fishy, a 15th anniversary retrospective documentary featuring that views with Cleese, Curtis Klein, that'll be taken from the um, DVD when it originally came out, I guess. On location, a documentary on the film's locations hosted by Robert Powell. Okay, Robert Powell's cool, you know. Brand new appreciation by Vic Pratt of the BFI National Archive. That's an unfortunate sir, isn't it? Brand new interview with production designer Roger Murray Leach. 26 deleted slash alternative scenes with Introductions by Cleese. A message from John Cleese, a tongue-in-cheek introduction recorded for the film's original release. Gallery, trivia track, theatrical trailer, reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by JC. People who people who just give us all like one word names. Puts me off a bit. It's like, fuck you, what's your actual name, you know? Pretentious cunt. He might be a bit, well, well that's, that's, yeah, that, that's him, that's good, I guess, you know, even though it's just... Is that a painting? That is a painting, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, he's a good, a good artist, but... The funniest movie I've seen in a long time, Roger Ebert. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> I don't want to speak ill of the dead, I mean, yeah, I'm supposed to greatly respect to the film critic, but, you know... He gave Fight Club a thumbs down, Predator... The Thing, when it originally came out, which he fucking backtracked on. So yeah, fuck him. I'll work for this. There you go. I think I might prefer that actually, I don't know. Maybe. Okay, so a fish called Wanda. A lovely straw. And what else do we have in here, Alibaba? Oh, I, was, I can't remember if I actually got this one or not. Ordered it or not. Society. Yeah. I mean, this is notorious for its last 15 minutes where fucking it just goes oh, and bonkers, but this film as a whole is fucking brilliant because it's got like a subtext and the, um, the, uh, the, the, the uh, social commentary, I guess you call it, and, uh, and, and it's a compelling, compelling thing. I don't like this new cover they got because, again, that focuses on the, uh, you know, the groo at the end. It's like, I mean, that's what it's remembered for it I guess but I prefer the original cover where it's got the uh, the socialite chip kind of pulling a face off and it's like a mask I'll show you and James Dean's watching her in the background I'll show you you know what I mean it's all about fitting in <laughs> yeah yeah I guess the whole body horror thing is uh, a metaphor as well fit in society and they, they mean literally when it's like squeeze there we go. There you go, that's the one I'm talking about. I, I, I prefer that cover. See, look at that. It's, that's just a weird cover. She's taking a face off there. James Dean's thinking, what the fucking hell's going on here? I'm not shagging it. There you go, that looks better. <laughs> it's got a very 80s kind of font. It's very 80s. Like, yeah, well, it's a very 80s cover, and it's all kind of not painting, but it's, it's very, got a very kind of sh shiny synthetic premise stuff. Yeah, anyway, that. And her face is coming off. Shit. A brand new audio commentary by Usner, Brian Usner, the director. Governor of Society, a brand new interview with Brian Usner. The Masters of the Hunt, a brand new feature including interviews with stars Billy Warlock, Devin DeVasquez, Ben Myerson and Tim Bartell. The Champion of the Shunt. 
new feature with FX artists Screaming Mad George, Dave Grasso, and Nick Benson. Yeah, that's going to be. 2014 Q&A with Brian Yusner recorded at Celluloid Screams Festival. Brian Yusner in conversation backstage at the Society World Premiere. Okay. Theatrical trailer, Persecution Mania, Screaming Mad George music video, reversible sleeve feature in the original, yeah, by uh, Nick Percival. So he did the, uh, the gory uh, one. But yeah. Yeah, good. Great movie, great movie. Yeah. Ah, Future Shock. Um, I've not seen this, but it's a story of 2000 AD. First published in 1977 at the height of the punk era, UK sci-fi comic 2000 AD was violent, anti-authoritarian, authoritarian, darkly funny and distinctly British. With such iconic characters as Strontium Dog, Nemesis and Judge Dredd, it became the anarchic underdog that forever changed the face of the international comics industry. Oh, Videodrome! I've not seen this for like years, and when I, when I last saw this, I think I was a teenager, and I, it was, I, I didn't really get into it. I, I, I kind of thought this is probably really good, but I'm just not engaging with it like I feel I should. Um, I think maybe I was looking for more of a straightforward something, but this is a this is some bonkers stuff. There you go. Long live the new flesh. Um. So yeah, I'm definitely interested in watching this again, and it's it's got a shitload of like extras on there, um, which yeah, it's worth it for, just for those really, because I love even if it's a film I'm not massively into, the documentaries and stuff about them can be very fascinating. Um, so what we've got audio commentary by Tim Lucas, the on-set correspondent for Cinema Fantastique magazine, and author of video drama studies in the horror film. David Cronenberg in the Cinema of the Extreme, a documentary program featuring interviews with Cronenberg, George R. 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 and Alex Cox on Cronenberg's cinema, censorship and the horror genre. I think I might have seen that. Uh, Forging the New Flesh, a documentary program by filmmaker Michael Lennick on video drums, video and prosthetic makeup effects. Video Oblivion, a brand new interview with cinematographer Mark Irwin. A brand new interview with producer De Pierre David, a.k.a. Jack Martin. Dennis Etchison, author of novelizations of Videodrome, Halloween, Halloween 2 and Halloween 3, and The Fog discusses Videodrome and its observations of Cronenberg's script. script. The complete uncensored Samurai Dreams footage with commentary by Michael Lennick. Helmet Test and Betamax, two features by Michael Lennick on effects featured in the film. Chimera, 2000, Cronenberg short film starring in Videodrome's Les Carlson. Fear on a film, a roundtable discussion from 1982 with Cronenberg, John Carpenter, John Landis and Mick Garris. Deleted scenes from the TV version. Deleted scenes from the TV version. Promotional feature of behind the scenes footage and interviews with Cronenberg, James Woods, Deborah Harry, and Rick Baker. Like I say, you know, James Woods, class actor, fucking really good, great in this. Deborah Harry, you know, blondie, she puts a fag out on a tit, and apparently that made an impact because his new artwork is basically that scene. Um, I think I prefer the old artwork with Scott. James was like, eh, kind of getting eaten up by static. Reversible sleeve feature in the original. I would buy, uh, is that Giles or Gillis? There's two L's in there. Uh, Gillis Van Vranchek, whatever the f I don't know how you pronounce that. Okay, last one here. And is it the one that I suspect I might have ordered? It is! There you go. Cruising Al Pacino. Now, the basic gist is, um, Al Pacino plays a cop who goes undercover in the New York, a specific part of the New York uh, gay scene, the heavy leather scene, because um, he's after a, a serial killer who's killing like gay dudes, um, and it, it's really fucking kind of graphic in the depiction of the what they get up to in in the, in the Blue Oyster, <laughs> and it's it's pretty fucking like kind of gross. I don't. I, I don't mean that in a homophobic sense, but it's just like, you know, if, if it was like hetero and it was a club like that and it was men and women doing those things to each other, I think it would be stinky, yeah. <clears throat> maybe. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I'd get into it or so. But no, if it's two dudes doing it, no, I'm not in. Mustaches everywhere and stuff. It's it's a really grubby kind of film, like the, the killing in it's really um, nasty and it's, the whole tone's grubby, but... It's almost like kind of a horror film, really. And um, the music's by what's it? What's his name? Jack Nietzsche. He did the music for Hardcore, which I really like. And I really like the music in this. It's really like, kind of like, like a horror tone. The ending is kind of ambiguous, and, you, and it kind of 
a lose that Pacino might be the killer or that anybody could be some shit like that and there's all kinds of little white layers in that there so um, yeah this is this is a this is a good this is a great film yeah I mean there's another one that I like can watch again I think they probably get some out of it but it is grubby and you know lots of lots of gross kind of ass banditry in there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not homophobic, you can do what you fucking want, you know, but, um, yeah, I'm not comfortable watching some of it, so. What's the original cover for this, like, because this one's very kind of homocentric, isn't it? Look at that, it's just, it could be like a gay palm. No, it's just some dude who's, not, it's just some dude, like, well, I suppose he's got, like, the blood there, suggests suggest he's being killed. Oh, yeah, there's a shadow of a guy with a knife. Yeah, still not the best. So this has got a cardboard sleeve as well. There's a poster in there, but that'd be funny, wouldn't it? Go with Night Being in America, World for London. Cruising. So, 4K scan of the original negative, blah, blah, blah. Optional English subtitles for the deaf. And, yeah, the brand new audio commentary with William Freakin and Critic and Broadcaster Mark Commode. Okay, that'd be interesting in itself. Archival audio commentary by William Friedkin. The history of cruising. Archival feature at looking at the film's origins and production. Exercising Cruising, archival feature at looking at the controversy surrounding the film and its enduring legacy. Original theatrical trailer. Yeah, those last two documentaries, I think I've, I've got them because they were on YouTube. So I'm just like kind of, you know, ripped them off YouTube. As you do, as you fucking do, lad. When you're a bad motherfucker. Oh, okay. This is the, well, I guess this was the original uh, theatrical poster for it then. They don't even say, they don't even mention anyone doing the new artwork for it. So maybe they didn't. Maybe they just took this from. This is almost like a stock photo that's been like treated a bit. You know, put a shadow and some blue tint on there. But yeah, I prefer this cover. It's more. What's well, just a better pitch? I mean, this one's just a dude. I think it's all like modelling fucking Levi's. At least this one's got like you know trees and lights and stuff. Okay, so that was uh, an unboxing video by me. Obviously, uh, it's of my latest purchases from Arrow Video in the UK um, thankfully Blu-ray uh, it's the same region code for the UK and Australia where I uh, reside now so that's not an issue anyway thank you for watching this uh, kind of generic unboxing video and uh, I've got some stuff coming up very soon so uh, yeah Get excited for that. But until then, thank you for your service. I need three days notice to have a wank.